This is Toon Talk Weekly, episode 258. This week, Brad and I check out a show we've been wanting to for a long time. On episode 85, we talked about the original DuckTales, and on this episode, we talk about the 2017 DuckTales. You want me to count the gold? Maybe go out and spend some gold to make sure it hasn't expired? There's more to money than just money. <laughs> gold is a beautiful thing, but even something as small as a dime can have meaning. For instance... Are you out of your head? You'll crack your skull open! But you swim in money all the time! Yes, but I worked hard to perfect that skill. Building muscles and dexterity. If you want something, you work hard to get it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toon Talk Weekly. This is the weekly cartoon podcast where we chat about a new and different cartoon every single week. Still don't know what to say, new or different. It's been like four, five, six years of this thing and I still don't know what to say. I'm Jake Williams. I'm going to tongue-tied, get tongue-tied, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Brad Chabalewski's here too. Uh, <laughs> Yo, what's up? I should have just jumped in there and saved the day. <laughs> Save me. I, yeah. <laughs> Save me, Brad. What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? It's going well, dude. I, I don't know what happened there. I just like blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, just like too much cartoon. This episode's not, or this cartoon's not really uh, different. It's new, yeah, but it's different, right? Uh, it is different. It's technically not new, and of course, we can't hide anything from you guys. We're watching the Ducktales 2017 series. Um, Brad's saying this isn't new because we actually did the original Ducktales series uh, before, which I believe was 1987. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. pretty old. Right, so the only other cartoon I think that we've done that's like this is the Powerpuff Girls. We did the revamped Powerpuff Girls I don't know, a while ago. Mm-hmm. We've done the original Powerpuff Girls, so now this is our second take at a remake. <laughs> uh, the only other one that I'll say we did uh, is Sailor Moon. But that was like uh, a weird joint episode, but I know what you mean. Y- yeah, that was the the same episode, just like updated. Sailor Moon was mm-hmm. its own thing. I don't know if any of these Ducktail episodes are the same episodes that were in the past, yeah. and I don't. Th- I, I could almost guarantee none of the Powerpuff Girls episodes are the same episodes. Yeah, although I will say the episode I watched this week of Ducktales, the 2017 series. I'm just gonna say Ducktales. So you guys know what I'm talking about now. Uh, the one I watched, I swore in the very first five minutes, I was like, I'm pretty sure this is the plot of an old DuckTales episode. You know how, like, when The Office came to America and the first season mm-hmm. was just, re- like, redone episodes of the British season, that kind of thing? Yeah. That's what I thought it was, but uh, it turns out not. Um, so let's get into a little bit about DuckTales. This is a show that Brad and I had talked about when they were going to reboot it uh, back last year and just... Uh, it's actually one of the only shows since we switched over from cable and started doing the YouTube TV stuff that I will just flick on. Like if it's just on, it's a a pretty pleasant show to watch, but I'd never sat down and and earnestly watched through an an entire episode. So, uh, Oh, so you've like, you've had a little more experience with this before we decided to do this. Kind of just like bits and pieces. Like if it was on, it's an easy cartoon to just throw on and watch. There's like a weird quality to it that I love. Like it, uh, it reminds me a lot of that loud house paper quality. Like it, it like feels like it's from the, the pages of a comic book. And I don't know mm-hmm. what that is. Like there is obviously some texture stuff there that they play up. Uh, for instance, the intro has like some halftone pattern stuff in it. So like, I think it's comics. just the line, the line weight. Uh, yeah. The character outline, uh, it's not the same as Loud House. Loud House has a much thicker outline to everyone. Yeah. Uh, but this has that like pencil outline that has like those gradients that kind of end and maybe the lines don't connect. So it feels sketchy that, a little bit. I just think the color palette too just feels a little bit more CMYK, like not as bright in your face kind of thing. Like it would be True, printed yeah. or something. So uh, Plus, like 
we like you said like putting it on in the background yeah uh, because it has that like almost like comfort feel like oh i know this show like i love this show i watched it all the time previously yeah. the voices the terminology like everything about it you're just like familiar with so you're like instantly if you've ever watched the previous ducktales you're like instantly transported to that world and you feel like happy that you're just back here you're like thank you mm-hmm. i i feel comfortable do not disturb me kind of thing well I'll say that it's familiar, except that I still couldn't tell you who, who Huey, Dewey, or Louie is. I, yeah, I could, <laughs> I'm not a big enough DuckTales fan. Sorry for any DuckTales fans out there. I don't know who the red, blue, or green one is. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. I know who Webby is. I got that down. Wait, is, oh, is Webby the girl? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Webby's awesome. Um, so DuckTales 2017, this is a reboot of the 1987 series, is developed by Matt Youngberg and Francisco Ngon, and uh, basically originally for Disney XD, but actually moved over to Disney Channel. Um, one season, 13 total episodes so far. However, it's been renewed for a second season. Actually, I think last March it was renewed for a second season, so I'm not sure if that's premiered yet or it just got ordered again. Um, it is produced by Disney Television Animation. The series is, again, a reboot. And um, I guess it was originally announced in 2015, and then it premiered Whoa. in August of last year. So that's funny, dude. The show actually hadn't even premiered. Oh, sorry. I wrote 2017. I must have written 2018. I think this year it got renewed for a second one. Uh, but the very first episode is what premiered as a 44-minute episode called Woo! Like the theme song. <laughs> you got to sing along. There you go. Um, and I haven't checked that one out yet. But um, my... So I w- oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, I watched this episode and... Um, what it does is it does a little like setup, like how do Huey, Dewey, Louie get to the mansion, uh, how Donald fits into this, why Donald is there. Uh, it does all of that, yeah. which I do not remember if the original DuckTales ever had a setup episode or you were just like Huey, Dewey, and Louie live with Scrooge and Donald is gone because mm-hmm. Donald is gone in the original. Like he doesn't even exist. Uh, yeah, I don't really remember being part of it. It was always that they were with their uncle Scrooge, but like, I don't know that it was ever explained. Plus, I always felt like the older series was just like, um, episodic escapades, right? Like they didn't necessarily tie together. It was kind of like, here's the adventure for today. Uh, Mm -hmm. and there was always an adventure where, um, after watching, you know, three episodes of this, mm -hmm they are doing things that like build the characters a little more that don't necessarily have like treasure hunting adventures. Yeah. And that, that kind of stuff does exist. I think that it's still maybe not as, um, at least in what I've seen so far, maybe not as adventurous. However, I gather even from the one episode I checked out this week that they are really trying to build a longer, bigger story to really get you invested into this family, into these characters, into these kids and what they might want to know about members of their family and who who's where and why that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more emotional in, in that way. I think, um, the show does feature voices of David Tennant, Ben Schwartz, Danny, Danny Pudi, um, Bobby Moynihan and others you might've heard of. Uh, they did, I guess some of the, there was something about it at a comic con. Some of the original DuckTales cast was upset that they weren't coming back for the, the actual show or the new <laughs> show. But I do think some of them are in the new show. Um, oh, yeah. And I guess the art style is heavily influenced by uh, not just the Carl Banks original Uncle Scrooge comics, but also, uh, sorry, Carl, Carl Barks, excuse me. Um, he, actually, he actually has some paintings as well. And I actually looked into some of these frames, and that's you definitely get the vibe that these are that more like paper-like quality we were kind of like talking about. Um, yeah. So they definitely went for that style. They definitely updated it, man, in like such a, you know how the old Disney stuff, sometimes it's just like very rounded and very like safe like t- designs. Uh these are definitely more skewn like the heads of Huey, Dewey and Louie are almost like amorphous blob kind of looking things like these like rounded squares instead. Um, they definitely took some risks was the way that they did the characters here, but I think it looks just amazing. It's so good. Yeah. Where we, I think it was a few episodes ago. We talked about that, the uh, reboot of the Thundercats thing yes, and this yeah. Cal art style. This kind of, makes it its own style it's not trying to be the adventure the ducktales adventure time right yeah uh so the basic story and i think you can probably um chime in on this too brad which is uh, this sounds like maybe what was covered in the first episode 
Um, after not speaking to each other for 10 years, Scrooge McDuck is reunited with Donald Duck as he, after he asks Scrooge to watch his three nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, for the day. Uh, the presence of the newcomers rekindles Scrooge's spirit of adventure, leading the group to go on the many treasure hunting expeditions, uh, while the nephews and their new friend Webby seek the truth behind their uncle's broken relationship and the mysterious disappearance of Huey, Dewey, and Louie's mother and Donald's sister, Della Duck. Right. Um, this is interesting, and I watched, I think it's episode two or three, and they already brought up Della. Like, that was uh, storyline B of the episode, was essentially figuring out that and it opens up so many avenues that i was like i don't care what's happening in the a plot like i want to know what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> right uh, so just to fill in that a little more because i watched that first episode uh at the end of it uh they basically burn down the houseboat mm-hmm. that donald duck and the three boys are living on oh man donald decides to take this burnt down houseboat and put it in Scrooge McDuck's, McDuck's pool because he doesn't want to live in the house of Scrooge McDuck. He is his own duck. So he's going to live in his houseboat that's in the pool. And then the boys all live inside um, at the house. And yeah, that's how they kind of get there. Mm-hmm. And I remember Scrooge McDuck being more of a curmudgeon right right in the old episodes where they have painted him in these new episodes not necessarily as a curmudgeon just a a guy that loves adventure but kind of got old and fell out of adventure and now that he has these young these young lads there to like pep him up he's all for like adventure again yeah but he's also set in his ways see i can't tell this either because um I was also gathering that, like, yeah, maybe he's older, and for instance, he's trying to teach Huey, Dewey, and Louie these life lessons of, like, hard work and, like, you should should work for things and, like, all this. I can't tell if it's that they played him up to be more of, like, a role model if I'm just older, so I value those sorts of things more, or they played up that Huey, Dewey, and Louie are, like, annoying whatever's before millennial kids, you know what I mean? Like, the next generation. (laughs) I guess they have a lot of respect for uh, Scrooge because they think of him as, like, this made man. He's got all this money. Like, he must be great. And they think of Donald as kind of this bumbling idiot. But really, um, in this first episode, they find out, like, Donald Duck is this huge heroic adventurer. Like, he's been on all these adventures. He was Scrooge McDuck's sidekick with Della. Mm -hmm. And that's something, like, they know nothing about. So they I think they're struggling a little bit dealing with like the fact that Donald is like a cool guy. He yeah. just happened to like decide to raise his nephews. Okay. And where does Webby come into this? Because it's brought to my attention that she is not a family member. Is she just a girl that lives in the neighborhood? No, she is a uh, crap. What's their housekeeper's name? Oh, I, I didn't even get that far. I don't think I met that person. Uh, yeah, she was not in uh, the episode you watched uh, Mrs. Beagley, okay. right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, it's her daughter that's living in the mansion, and uh, she's been a little like of a shut-in, maybe a little overprotective of her, and mm-hmm. so she has not interacted with many people. Yeah. And so now having these basically friends for the first time, she's a little more like a, a little crazier than maybe Huey doing and Louis are, who are a little more like social... Uh, inept like we're not inept like just they're relatable they're just average kids where webby's like i don't know i'm a i'm homeschooled and i'm kind of crazy and i i'm really smart and i know all this cool stuff that you guys don't know but uh, i don't know how to deal with other people because i've had no friends (laughs) yeah interesting um i didn't i didn't gather as like that she was like, like crazy but she is very anxious like not anxious um she just had a lot of energy and she doesn't know how to like tone it down, mm. kind of. Yeah, that episode with the dime, and they went to the uh, archives. Yeah. She's a little more reserved in that episode than I think the previous episode where they go to uh, Funzo's Fun Zone. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, this dime episode. For do you know which one actually happened first? Does it matter? What do you mean, the dime? The dime or the, or the one or that the, you watched? Uh, the Funzo's Fun Zone is episode two, and. Uh, the dime episode is episode three. 
Okay. Well, we'll talk about the the first one you watched because I don't want to step over maybe some cross story stuff that might happen. Um. Yeah, they didn't really necessarily go together in the Funzo Fun Zone episode. They are the B plot is Donald not following the rules of the house and like basically you know um, hurt like flooding the house, uh, trying to get his houseboat up and running, um, you know just not fitting in because he's never had someone basically around to help him or follow orders. So that's gotcha. that's the B plot that's happening in the house. The main plot was Huey, Dewey, and Louie and Webby decide to take the bus to go to Funzo's Fun Zone, which is a crappy arcade. <laughs> it has a ball pit, it has an arcade, and it has, I don't even know what else they showed, just like slides and like, you know, you can get pizza there. It's. I mean, it sounds great. It's a crappy Chuck E. Cheese. That's what it is. They even have the line, like, there's a moment where the uh, the villains, you remember these villains from the previous uh, DuckTales? They're like dogs. They have bees on their shirt. <laughs> no, I uh, really they, don't. <laughs> they, they try to get into Funzo Fun Zone at one point, and they're like, nope, you have to have a miner to come into Funzo's Fun Zone. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and that's true. Like, I remember uh, in high school, like, we tried to go into Chuck E. Cheese because we're like, we, you can't drink and you really are bored in the suburbs. So let's go Chuck E. Cheese because it's arcade. Mm-hmm. They do not let you in unless you have a minor, which is probably very good in hindsight for creepy people that want to go to these places and teenage kids. I think it's probably... 70% for the teenage kids that just want to screw things up and yeah. 30% for the creepy people. But uh, <laughs> uh, So they're in Funzo Fun Zone and Webby does not know how to interact with this place. Um, at one point, one of the boys are like, hey, if you ask for a cup for water, you can basically get free fruit punch. Yeah. And she's like, what? No, that's stealing. No, so he shows her how to do it. Like, you just got to be, uh, you got to flirt. You kind of got to be nice to the person that's going to give you the cup. So you got to be like, hey, nice haircut. Can I get one of those cups for water? And then she, like, asks very awkwardly. She's like, can I get one of those cups, you know, for water that gives you a punch? And basically they get in trouble and they have to pay for their fruit punch because... Mm -hmm. And then the girl who is giving the free cups, she gets in trouble by the boss, and so that's a whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't tell. Is that the heat lamps or your natural glow? Oh, Mr. Duck. The usual? Yep. One free cup for water, please. That's not water! It's all part of the system. You try. hey yo, uh, Jenny. It's Jane. I'm Webby. I was hoping you could hook a gal up with one of those free water cups. You know, for fruit punch. You sure you don't want it for water? Yes, for water. Fruity water that really packs a punch. Am I right? I I don't know what you mean. Then they go to basically a car, Guitar Hero game, and uh, Webby accidentally unplugs it and loses one of the boys' uh, high scores. Like, he had the top 10 scores in the game. Mm-hmm. It got unplugged. Scores got erased. Damn. It's 2017, man. Come on. Yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> and then the final straw is she's in the ball pit, and it's the deepest ball pit ever. Mm-hmm. And she starts to get sucked down into the ball pit, and she thinks it's a trap, gets freaked out, pulls out her grappling gun from her backpack, shoots it up in the sky but it bounces off all these different things knocks over stuff and funzo's fun zone starts on fire and they get kicked out they are banned for life while this burning is, fun while zone. this building is burning to the ground uh yeah but then those uh bad guys decide like oh we can capture scrooge mcduck's kids mm. and hold them for ransom so they try to do that but then uh Webby basically using her like skills and training defeats the bad guys and you know kind of saves the day yeah (laughs) wow so that's a 
I guess that's the short answer. There's other little details there. But that was kind of the first episode, especially where you see, or the second episode of the season, and you see Webby as this more, uh, she's got her own style. Yeah. Like she just doesn't know how to, like, hang out. She's never seen a ball pit. She doesn't know what arcade games is. At one point, she's like, this is my first computer game I've ever played. So, so she's a very sheltered kid. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So that episode didn't feature so much of this bigger plot of figuring out Huey, Dewey, and Louie's mother and, like, her history thing. No, you got more of Duckburg. You got more of uh, a, more of a Webby episode, I yeah, guess. Yeah, so it sounds and then, like. And then Donald on the, the B plot. Yeah. Interesting, man. I definitely have to check that one out because if nothing else, it sounds like just a for fun episode doing kind of what we talked to our buddy Nick Hopkins on the Adventure Time episode about where – there is a bigger plot going on, but sometimes you just need these for fun episodes, right? And you learn to like love Webby a lot. Where, yeah. as a as a boy watching the old Ducktales, I remember just liking Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and Webby was always just this like side character, mm-hmm. and she was also younger than Huey, Dewey, and Louie right. in the previous series, so she always felt like she was in the way, and you never cared about her, like an annoying but, little sister kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah. in this episode, she has that annoying little sister, but you're also like, damn, she's kind of cooler than mm-hmm. Huey, Dewey, and Louie, who are like the same three people. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so the, the second episode that we'll talk about today a little bit here is The Great Dime Chase. This is the one that I caught. Um, this one actually is like kind of two of the Ducks, two of the Brothers episodes, because one of them is not featured at all. I believe yeah, we're it, missing the green duck of uh, whatever, whoever that is. Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. How do I? I think we're missing the green one because the, the blue one is in the library. No, maybe it's the red duck. I don't know. No, I'm sorry. I think you're right. No, I, I'm gonna literally gonna look. <laughs> if you Google it, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, which is which? <laughs> Note that the maybe brightest the- of the hue of the three is red, so Huey. The color of water, dew, is blue, and that leaves Louie. Leaves are green. <laughs> That's oh, how this that... person remembers. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. I'm down. I know now. All right. Uh, I believe that you're correct. Huey Wait, I actually is not think in Huey this. is not in it. Red Duck. Who, he's kind of the more level-headed yeah. duck. Right. Right? Yeah. Uh, it, like, Just... I want to say the Alvin of the Alvin and the Chipmunks a little bit, right? Like... A little, bit, a more little but more just like he doesn't necessarily have as much uh, character traits as uh, Louie and Dewey do. Where Louie is uh, mischievous and kind of doesn't follow the rules, right? Yeah. And Dewey is a little smarter than the three is than the other ones. Right. <laughs> so in this episode, we have two plots here. Um, there's actually a cool scene early on in the beginning with Webby that I totally forgot who Webby was, but it's where Dewey is like infiltrating her room and trying to like look into stuff. And it shows how intelligent she is about her own stuff because he, she catches him red handed trying to look at some kind of diary and he gets glitter all over his hands. And she mentions like, what you think I just put it on there? Cause it's cool. And she's like, no, well it is a perk, but I mean, it's also like, you know, for criminals. It's yeah. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> in you're breaking in busted you think i put glitter on my top secret notebooks just because it's pretty well sure it's a perk but i'm sorry i was just looking for information about my family you should have asked what do you want shoe sizes horrible dark secrets known only to your uncle scrooge that could change the fate of the world as we know it what do you know about my mom (gasps) what do you know about your mom uncle donald just told us she was gone the the only thing we have of her is this photo <gasps> Photographic evidence! I've got to add it to my Della Duck file. You have a whole file on my mom? Seriously? This is it? But the, the two plots here are... One is uh, Louie basically being the most annoying kid he possibly can be. Uh, just sitting and watching a show called The Ottoman Empire. Like a reality show where these two big brothers... Uh, refurbish ottomans in like under a certain amount of time for clients it sounds like a reality show that would be a real thing it's Um, pretty hilarious i'll bring it up now 
the show pops up throughout the episode because he like checks his phone or it's on or whatever. And I think he makes a comment that's exactly how you get roped into reality shows, which is, oh, man, I used to hate this, but it's actually kind of interesting. Like, there's no way they're going to upholster that in enough time. <laughs> yeah, you, he's watching an episode later. He's like, no way they get this done in a day. <laughs> right. So I think that's how you get roped into reality shows. You watch a handful of them and you're like, oh, I don't know. I'll yeah. see what happens this time. Yeah, no way they can build this entire house in two days. <laughs> right. So that TV show aside, the episode plots, the main one is uh, about the dime, is Louis being taught the value of a hard day's work and what you can earn with that. And so he gets taken to work um, with Scrooge McDuck for the day. Um, so sort of a weird bring your son to work day. Um, the B plot, I think the more interesting plot that kind of leads you down some cool avenues, is Huey and Webby looking into a little bit more about like Huey is, is thinking and wondering more about his mother, Della and there's not much there, uh, but they realize they can actually get into what's called the archives. Brad brought this up earlier. That's actually mm-hmm. in, is it in the same place? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's in, in Scrooge's tower or whatever it is. Cause they go to work with him in the vault. Yeah. Um, and that stuff's fascinating, but we'll stick to the main a plot first and then we'll talk about the second one. Right. So, uh, essentially he gets brought to work for the day. And I don't even remember what tasks he gave him. There was no tasks given. It was just supposed to be see what business you're going. To, you're going to see how business is done, yeah. and see how much work I put in every day. And the very first scene you get is basically him sitting in a boardroom, falling asleep because he's discussing, you know, boring business stuff. It's a, it's a budget meeting, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, in this scene, also, you get something that kind of drives that dime storyline here, which is, um, is it Gizmo? I always forget his name. Gyro. 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 Um, comes in with an invention, and the invention is Lil Bub. Like, are you tired of all these one-use devices that are clogging up your drawers? Well, I got this little robot. He runs on a light bulb, and he just does stuff for you. He's a little robot assistant. Is this a, yeah. So cool. Nice job, Gyro. I remember. I kind of remember Gyro mm-hmm. from the old episodes. but uh, Launchpad yeah. is actually featured briefly in this episode as he crashes the limo into a wall when, they, when he pulls up, and then he drives away. <laughs> Yeah, he's a big character in the pilot episode, oh, which okay. he should be because being the pilot. <laughs> oh, man, you went there. <laughs> uh, what this episode turns into is a lot of cutting back and forth to the meeting of Scrooge deciding what to and to, what he can and can't cut. Um, and it parallels what's happening in the episode with the archives <clears throat> and the librarian sort of curating that as well as uh, Gyro here. Right. So. Um, Basically, what happens is Huey here. Sorry, not Huey. Uh, Dewey. I'm trying to remember the like mnemonic to remember him now. Dewey. Uh, wait, I'm getting it wrong. Louis yeah, is the Louis. one with the dime. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're gonna do this. The rest Dewey. Of the Dewey's in the archives. Yes. So Louis is like, ah, well, this is super boring. I'm just gonna go get a soda. Turns out a soda is a dollar ten. He only had a dollar. There must be a dime laying around here somewhere. Early in the episode, when he first gets to Scrooge Tower. He's shown this like regal pillow with a di- shiny dime on it under a glass case that is the first dime that Scrooge ever made that he like yeah, kind of reminds himself like, of hard work. What was it like a $30,000 or $20,000 velvet pillow for this dime? Yeah, it was crazy expensive. This already, by the way, reminded me of the episode of SpongeBob where uh, they had to repaint his living room, but they weren't allowed to remove anything. Uh, they were sorry. SpongeBob and Patrick needed to repaint Mr. Krabs' living room without removing anything from the walls. And on the wall was the first dollar he ever made. And there were scenes of them trying to figure out how to paint around it and stuff. And they ruined the dollar until he can fix it later. So yeah, okay. So essentially, that's what you know what's going to happen here. He goes and gets that dime. He's like, oh, sweet, a dime just for me. Gets the soda, which, by the way, he only likes the first sip of the soda because it's the best, and then he throws the rest of them away. <laughs> it's peak carbonation. Dude, that first scene when he's sitting on the couch and he's like, oh, I don't really want to watch this. It's peak carbonation. I got these sodas. I got six of them. Can you go get me more? Oh, my phone's dead. I'll just buy another one. We're rich. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> And throws his phone in the trash. I love he's Scrooge. Like, it's like a week old. Yeah. I, don't know. I love that Scrooge is like, no, I'm rich. <laughs> like, you just live here. Um, That's a very parent thing to say. Like, no, you don't have any money. Yeah. I have money. So this whole dime bit is that, like, 
he realizes what that dime was after he spent it. Like he makes the quick decision multiple times in this episode and then regrets it. So he has to track down the guy who's emptying the machine of dimes where that all goes. Uh, eventually there's a room where there's a machine that's like sucking it all up to spit it out into the vault, the big vault where you swim in your money, the classic like Scrooge McDuck thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, along the way. I did, oh, go ahead. I did like this episode where uh, he was going to jump into the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. money bin and Scrooge is like, what are you doing? You're totally going to break your neck if you dive into that. Yeah. And he's like, what? You do it all the time. He's like, I've practiced it. I know how to swim in money. Yeah. I, I've perfected <laughs> my form over years. You don't know how to swim in this much money, kid. <laughs> when he's trying to track down this dime, he's found it in this one room. He does remember the. Uh, he convinces Gyro that like, hey, can I borrow your little bub? I'm also rich because my uncle's rich. So, you know, can I... Basically, can we do this? Can I use your guy for the day? And he, yeah. and he helps him break into this room with the help of this little bub, bulb assistant. I'm going to keep calling him little bub, bub rub. Um, I think he says little bub. It's little bulb. Little bulb, bulb yeah. little bulb. Uh, but little bulb, there's a problem with Gyro's inventions. Uh, he said only 50% of them become sentient and try to take over stuff and, and become a problem. And of course, that's this, what happens here. This was one of the 50%. Yeah, yeah. He becomes evil and is on a mission to suck up all dimes yeah for whatever reason that becomes his motive because that's what he's been tasked with but he's also like built himself he broke down another piece of machinery to become a bigger robot and this ends up chasing um louis all over the 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 office right and after all this he ends up returning the dime there's a lot of great action scenes so you definitely should check out this episode like with this stuff um the character design i love the actual like poses and stuff for the little bulb guy but Mm-hmm. Um, the, the day gets saved because the bulb was actually using the too powerful of a bulb. He needed like a 50 watt instead, and then he wouldn't instead be Instead so of mad. a 75 yeah. watt. It's like, oh, okay. But they return the dime, and this is where Scrooge mentions like, oh, pff, why would I leave that out there? No, it's on me all the time, and he's got it as a necklace. He's like, that's a decoy yeah. for people. <laughs> so all the trouble is nothing. I will also say Louis went up so many flights of stairs in this episode. Yeah, 57 to lower level back up to wherever yep. the duck saw Scrooge's office was. Who knows? Yeah. Always a problem with the elevator. However, to me, the more interesting part, that was obviously the main plot of the episode was Webby and Huey going into the archives to learn more about Della. They do meet this woman. I forget her name now, but she is the curator of the archives. She's been there for like 50 years. She knows as much as possible as there is to know about the Scrooge McDuck family. Right. Um, and he, she almost like proposes these trials it becomes weird really fast when she pulls out a sword and starts slashing at the kids to like, <laughs> ah, get away or whatever. Um, they find a book eventually that they earn and inside is like an ISBN, like a number kind of thing or where to put the book back. They have mm-hmm. to do her job for her, the librarian lady. And they start learning a little bit here and there more about, about Della. Della because they find this secret room. It's filled with all sorts of things and a clue to where she might be, which is a framed note that says, sorry, I've taken this spear, uh, this artifact, um, and basically left. Okay, here goes no- Ah, oh, what is up with this stupid library? McDuck family DNA recognized. Wow. Why would this stuff be hidden? I gotta show Huey and Louie. Wait, what's this? Scrooge, I've taken the Spear of Selene. I'm sorry, Della. Wait, what did she take? Why is she sorry? Did she betray your Uncle Scrooge? We can't tell anyone about this until we find out what it means. Right, so they think possibly, oh, did she double-cross Uncle Scrooge? Right. Um... So we're not we're not sure about that, but he likes uh, Della's important enough that there's an entire room of all information about her. Right. But she must obviously be in hiding because the only people that are supposed to know about her are uh, DNA relatives of her. Right. Exactly. And the fact that so much is hidden there, I just think this like finding your mother's story that she was also this adventurer kind of person. Uh, I, I could see that being a big plot maybe through the first season. Again, we haven't watched the whole season, but I 
think it's fair to say I think we're both super interested. Like the show's really good. Jake, you haven't watched the entire twenty two episodes in or twenty three episodes in a week? Yeah, man. I don't know. You know, I just I got I got work. I don't. Know. I'm just making excuses. I guess I'll just stop. I'll watch I mean, the whole it's thing. Only, it's only twelve hours of cartoons. I mean, I guess we shouldn't be called Toon Talk Weekly then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but I think this stuff is interesting. I think building a longer term pattern, they've already got me, man. In one episode, I care way more about these characters than I ever did um, yeah. in the old series. Okay. Not not to say that they weren't good, but that's like popcorn cartoons, fun adventure stuff. This like feels real. It feels like there's some heart to who these characters are. And I feel for these little boys wanting to know who their mother is, you know, like what mm-hmm. this what this thing is. So uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, I, I love it a lot. Like I... I will be watching this entire season. I will probably be done with it in a couple weeks here. Like it's just it's my new cartoon right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I did notice was missing from these first three episodes that I watched was there's no woodchuck scouts. Like that is something I believe it was woodchucks mm-hmm. uh, from the old season where the boys would be like, "What would the woodchucks do?" Uh, right? Okay. Like something. And they you. would like uh, look at the manual and be like you know, woodchucks are always supposed to be prepared or like always do this or tie this knot. Uh, I don't know if that comes back. It almost feels like Webby is filling this like, uh, what was it? Like the mastermind kind of role, mm-hmm. like the, the, the smarts, the book smarts where maybe they would reach for the woodchuck thing. Like they were like, Oh, this could be Webby's trait, Yeah, but they may bring it back. I don't, I don't know. This is three episodes in, they haven't mentioned it, but maybe they will. It's awesome, man. Um, and also another shout out to the backgrounds and layouts in this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, they remind me, they rival so much of what we talked to our Rich Danny's on our sessions episode about um, Welcome to the Wayne and some of the rad backgrounds they have to come up with. Like some of the layouts for the show are just amazing. Yeah. Um, and the intro is awesome. It's super good. It's it's like they redid the theme song. It's a new cover of it, but it's just as good. Like it's it's exactly what you want. It gets you hyped up for the show. I do believe mm-hmm. it's a shorter version than the original song, though. But that's fine. It's yeah. 20, 2018. So. Um, it only would have been better if they would have got Carly Rae to do it. You know? Did she do like a... <laughs> she did the full house. <laughs> oh. Let's not talk about that. Um, yeah, man. So we love the new DuckTales series. We're definitely going to be checking out more about this. We should probably poke in and see where we're at with watching more of this as we you know, continue doing shows. But let's yeah. get out of here for this episode. Brad, where can people find out more about where you're talking about DuckTales when you're not talking about DuckTales right here? So you can follow me on Twitter. It's at BRAD. And then my blog is digitalhitchhiker.com. Guys, go check them out over there. And gals, whoever you are, go check Brad out over there. Uh, mm-hmm. You can follow me on Twitter at Jacob Williams. Uh, if you want more Toon Talk Weekly, we're all over social media. We're Toon Talk Weekly on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and Instagram. Pretty easy to find. Or you just heard our handles. You can find it through us as well. Uh, Toon Talk Weekly at gmail.com. Let us know what you thought of this episode and other episodes or recommend episodes that you think you might want to hear us talk about in the future. Also, if there's more about DuckTales, we should check out. If we should keep going with the show, which is not going to take a lot of convincing, let us know. And finally, the main hub for the show, ToonTalkWeekly.com. You can find any and all episodes over there, including episode 85, where we talk about the original DuckTales. Um, so you can compare and contrast. Listen to both. So yeah, that's going to do it for this week's episode. It was awesome. So glad we have a new show to watch. This is just this is part of the reason the show is so fun to do. The, the podcast is so fun to do because we get to find new cartoons all the time. Um, so that's going to do it for this episode. We'll be back next week with another cartoon. Take care. To learn more about the show, visit ToonTalkWeekly.com or follow us on Twitter at ToonTalkWeekly. Weekly.